Good morning and welcome to Balmoral Presbyterian Church. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with you today. We're glad you decided to worship with us. This is the third Sunday of the Easter season and we're continuing to look at what it means to be resurrection people. Our scriptures and our sermon this morning will center around who we are as children of God. We hope that by the end of the service, you will feel lifted up, comforted, and perhaps a little challenged. Please join me as we prepare for worship by tuning in to our prelude. Let us say responsively our call to worship. Who are we? We are God's children. What does that mean? We belong to God who loves us abundantly and forever. Yes, God loves us and invites us into a journey of transformation.
The psalmist tells us, when you are disturbed, do not sin. But our sin is ever before us. Trusting that God hears when we call and that faith in Jesus can bring us health, let us turn to God in repentance and confess our sin. Let us pray, first together and then silently. Oh God, we are a forgetful people. We forget who we are. We think we are that mistake we made years ago, or we are the failures we've experienced, or we are the person who was never good enough. Remind us how wrong we sometimes are. Remind us that we are your children, lavishly loved by you. Please forgive the ways we hurt ourselves and one another. Forgive our negative thoughts and actions and transform us into the people you created us to be. Hear the good news, my friends, and take it to heart. God raised Jesus from the dead. To this we are witnesses. God is able to put gladness in our hearts and to bring us to new life in safety and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As the forgiven people of God, we share the peace of Christ with one another. We say, the peace of Christ be with you, and we respond, and also with you. May Christ's peace be your solace today and every day.
As our psalmist will remind us, God invites us into silence. God recognizes that silence can be powerful, and God wants us to experience that power. Silence pushes us to listen, to open our hearts and quiet our minds and bodies. The gifts of stillness are many. One of these gifts is wisdom. Not knowledge, but wisdom. The gaining of knowledge can be a noisy affair. Questions asked and answered, ideas discussed and thoughts exchanged. Wisdom rarely comes in the midst of speaking and the back and forth of conversation. Wisdom is bestowed when we are quiet enough to hear it. So let us be still. We give thanks, O God of sacred stories, for the witness of Holy Scripture. Through it, you nurture our imaginations, touch our feelings, increase our awareness, and challenge our assumptions. Bless, we pray, our hearing of your word this day. Speak to each of us, speak to all of us, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, we may be hearers and doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may remember the phrase from an old Coca-Cola ad, the pause that refreshes. I loved that ad because Coke was exactly that for me, a pause that refreshed me. There is a pause in the Bible that also refreshes. It is the word selah, S-E-L-A-H. You may have noticed it as it appears occasionally in the book of Psalms. It means pause. As I read our scriptures today, both the psalm and the selection from 1 John, as I read our scriptures today, I will be pausing periodically to give us the opportunity for the words we are hearing to come to a rest inside of us so that we might hear with our hearts as well as our ears. As each segment is read, I invite you to pay attention to the word or phrase that grabs you, rings true for you in this moment, seems to stand out from the rest. Then use the silent pause as a time of reflection on that word or phrase. 
First, we will be listening to Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But I know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Let us pause. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Let us pause. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Let us pause. Here ends the Old Testament reading, Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. And now we turn to 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Listen to the Word of God. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Let us pause. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Let us pause. This is the end of the New Testament reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We each have our own ways of describing our relationship with God and Jesus. Some of us like to talk about Jesus as our special friend. 
Others find comfort in the phrase, Lamb of God. Still others put the emphasis on community. Our sense of belonging to the gathering of the faithful is the way we describe our relationship with God. My way of putting into words how I feel about God came to me a few years ago when I was asked to sing a solo in the choir at First Congregational. Now keep in mind that I do not have a solo voice. I'm good at reading music and I can sing on key loudly, but solos, way out of my range. We were practicing an anthem entitled, I Know Something About God's Grace. And our director, Dennis, turned to me and asked me if I would sing that line alone at the beginning and the end of the piece. I was caught off guard, embarrassed, and touched. I might even have said, are you talking to me? However, what I discovered in singing those two simple lines was this, I do know something about God's grace. And I was able to sing with a full heart. A member of that congregation took my picture while I was singing and gave it to me. Now, whenever I feel out of touch with God, I can look at that picture and remember all the ways I have known about God's grace. The writer of 1 John has his own way of describing his relationship with the Almighty, child of God. Did you know that many years ago, the PCUSA put out a catechism for young people to help them understand how they and God were related? The first question was, who are you? And the answer, a child of God. It is perhaps the simplest and the most provocative way of putting our connection to God in words. The writer of 1 John wanted his community to remember this above all. If they forgot everything else, they would still be okay. But if they forgot they were children of God, the community would fall apart. So what does it mean, children of God? It means that we have God's DNA. Our blood type is not A or B or O. Our blood type is G-O-D, God. It's like a stamp on the inside of us, a stamp that will never fade or grow dim. And what does it mean to have God's DNA? It means we have a God like the one described in Psalm 4, as you may have discovered as you pondered its meaning for you. Here's what God is like from Psalm 4. God hears and answers prayer. God listens when we want to talk. God gives us good advice. God gives us goodness and gladness. And God makes it possible for us to go to sleep at night knowing we can be at peace, safe in God's hands. These are the things that are in God's DNA and in ours. Let's take a closer look at a couple of them. God hears and answers prayer. Inherent in the psalmist's words is the trust that God will answer. She says, answer me, be gracious to me. Why pray if there's no hope for an answer? Why pray if we don't believe God will be gracious? Sometimes God's answer comes in the form of a word, sometimes a bird, sometimes an open door, sometimes an unexpected occurrence, but it always comes. And it comes in a way that is recognizable, even if we don't get it till later. God's answers are individual and community specific. Augustine said, God loves each one of us as if there were only one of us. That's true for a person and it's true for a community of the faithful as well. 
If prayer and answering prayer is in God's DNA and God's DNA is in us, what does that mean? Are we supposed to hear and answer prayer? Yes, I think we are. You may never have had the occasion to call, but if you did call the suicide hotline, someone would answer, stay on the phone as long as you needed, and help in any way he or she could. Is that not answering prayer? Or perhaps you get a phone call one day and you realize that the friend on the other end of the line is in dire straits. You drop everything, including whatever is on your mind, and you listen. You attend to the friend with everything you have. Is that not answering prayer? God prepares us, his children, for that moment by giving us her God DNA. God also gives good advice. God knows us so well. God knows that we learn by figuring things out for ourselves. So her advice is this, ponder and be silent. Not usually what we want to hear. Hey, God, we need answers. Tell us what to do. However, this not, not, does not always seem to be God's way. Sometimes God gives us more credit than we give ourselves. God trusts us to be able to think deeply, feel deeply, and allow for the wisdom that comes from stillness. God speaks in the storm. God speaks in the roar of the sea. God speaks in hugs and kisses. God also speaks in sheer silence. What does that have to do with us? Maybe we need to give others the same kind of advice that God gives us. Maybe people don't need for us to tell them what to do, even if we think we have just the right answer. Maybe we need to trust others as much as God trusts us. Whoa, that's a thought. Let's hear that one again. Maybe we need to trust others as much as God trusts us. Perhaps God has given each one of us the ability to be silent, to wait for wisdom, to look and listen for signs and words. So let's encourage folks to be still. What we need and what they need will be given. Maybe the gift of trust is part of G-O-D DNA. Remember that adage that was circling some time ago? The family that prays together stays together. Ugh. That really bugged me. Mostly because I don't believe it's necessarily true. I would change it to read. The family that prays together moves into the future with confidence and hope. And when I say family, I'm referring to the family of God the children of God. I'm referring to us, the Balmoral family. How we pray and how we respond to one another's prayers is critical because prayer is part of our DNA. We don't all have to pray the same thing and we don't have to respond to one another in the same way, but we do need to be still together, listen for God's spirit together, Share what is given to us in those times of silence and listen to what others have been given. It's a way of adding to our repertoire of what it means to be church, what it means to be children of God. We do know something about God's grace and in the sharing of those somethings, we discover the path God has in mind for us. Amen. Holy God, you have given us your own son and your own DNA. You have brought us into your family and adopted us as children. We know who we are. 
recipients of your boundless grace. We lift our hands in joyful praise to you this morning. We feel less alone when we remember that you live in each of us and all of us. This dreadful pandemic has taught us that it is your spirit that binds us together and your spirit is more powerful than walls and closed doors. Help us in this moment to close our eyes and feel the nearness of members of our Balmoral family. Hear now, gracious Lord, our prayers for those who need your healing touch and a listening ear. Hear our prayers for leaders in our world, our country, and our city. Help them to act with righteousness and compassion. Hear our prayers for those who have no bed at night and no breakfast in the morning. We may not know their names, but we see them walking our streets. Hear our prayers for those who find it hard to pray for themselves. Hear our prayers for the seas, the land, and the air we breathe. Help us to follow the advice of those who study our environment and know what we need to do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers for ourselves. May we be open to your leading. May we be open to the needs of your troubled world. May we see your DNA in every person who crosses our paths. May we trust your spirit dwelling within us and among us. And may we pray fervently and passionately to you, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The abundance of your gifts overwhelms us, God. You pour into us life, love, forgiveness, peace, joy, and even your DNA. And we hope those gifts pour out of us as well. At this time, we share our personal wealth with you as much as we are able. We thank you for this opportunity to give. If you wish to mail in your offering, our church address is on the screen, along with my contact information.
let us pray. Ever giving God, take these gifts of ours and use them to advance your kingdom on earth so that it will be more like your heaven. Amen. With God, nothing is impossible. And since God is with us, even in our very DNA, we have the power to do things we thought were impossible. Imagine that. Use silence this week to tap into that power and let it free you to become more of what God created you to be. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>